Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Unity's Unite Developer Conference just wrapped up and we've got some insights into the future of Unity. I'm calling it Unity 7. We had the following from their keynote. But while we're already working on the next generation after Unity 6, in fact, we're already over a year into development and we're really excited about what the new capabilities are going to bring you. We're a ways out yet, but today, we want to give you just a taste of where things are headed and what that will help you to do. So that is from the keynote, and what we're going to do now is take a look at the breakout session, the Unity Engine Roadmap. Specifically, we're going to focus more on the next generation of Unity. I'm making the presumption that it's going to be called Unity 7, given that they just rebranded to Unity 6. If they rebranded to something else again, that would just be madness. So we're going to assume the next gen they're referring to is Unity 7. Now, in this slide, they start off talking about uh, Unity 6, things that are going on currently with Unity 6. We already know about the new features coming in Unity 6. We got things like the resident drawer. We have new uh, AI tools in there. We have the new lighting system uh, with the automatic probe volumes, multiplayer improvements, and so on. And one of the things that they're coming into is that they're switching up the way they are doing their releases. So they're going to have longer, stable releases and faster, frequent patches. That means that 6.0 is going to be with us for a very long time. And we're going to see 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4 with more frequency than what we saw in the past. So that's what we're going to see. And then they're going to also have it so that each upgrade is, you know, less impact on what you do. So if you want to go up to 6.2, you can upgrade your 6.1 game so you can actually do this. Because a lot of people are stuck on versions of Unity from, like, decades back because they were afraid to break based off things that changed, they're going to try and make it more stable going across. So the current timeline of things, now do keep in mind, Unity 6 is really just Unity 2023 rebranded. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now. And in 2024, right near the end of it, that is where we're seeing Unity 6 first being released. So that is the Unity 6 generation as they were talking about it. And this is going to go on and be supported. So a number of small releases inside of that for a number of years. And we're going to have the first release being the 6.1 update that is coming in early uh, 2025. Now, it's actually a pretty mild update. So we've got a few new things coming in there. Um, new LOD system, uh, deferred plus rendering uh, for mobile. So also optimization for mobile rendering. We got a couple new platforms being supported and support for large screens and foldable. So you're not seeing a huge amount in these updates. Those are going to be instead be coming uh, in the next stage. And that is going to be where we come into and what I am calling, so I'm going to skip through the six point stuff. Uh, so we're coming into Unity Next Generation. At least that is how they are referring to it. I'm going to just call it Unity 7, and this is what we can expect from the next version of Unity. Now, this is being tested by a handful of internal customers. It's very much under development right now, but we get an idea of what they're focusing on in the next version of Unity. And Unity 7 is going to be a pretty big and I think breaking release. It's going to cause a lot of the asset store assets to struggle, but in a good way, because right now we have so so much fragmentation between the uh, built-in rendering pipeline, standard rendering pipeline, HD rendering pipeline, do I use dots or do I not, and, and so on. So all of that complexity is being simplified down. So we've got simplification, iteration, and power being their key things that they're focusing on. Simplicity is what I was talking about earlier on, specifically simplified rendering. Uh, so what we're going to have uh, is we're going to have the new UI toolkit. That was going to be a Unity 6 feature. It seems to have been pushed over into uh, Unity 7. And people do like it that have played with it, but it is a new UI system. But I think the biggest new thing coming in Unity 7 is the simplified rendering. So back with Unity, I don't even know what release it was. It was back in like 2017-ish. Uh, they announced the dots and the new scriptable render pipelines, and it forked into the universal render pipeline for real-time and mobile, and HDRP for like high-end consoles and PCs. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, so they're basically undoing that. Instead of having all of these different rendering cores, you are going to have 
basically once. Right now you have ERP, or the Universal Render Pipeline, and the HDRP, the High Definition Render Pipeline. Now you're going to have the Unified Renderer. So they are merging them together. I do believe that it's ultimately the Universal Render Pipeline that more or less won. So they're bringing functionality from the HDRP and putting it in to the Universal Render Pipeline. Uh, on top of that, so we got uh, lighting updates, custom passes with render graph. So the ERP lit, complex lit, simple lit, and HDRP lit are all being pushed into the unified rendering pipeline as a scalable lit shader using open PBR. So they're going to set it. So we now have one renderer to rule them all. You can also see a bit of a screenshot of Unity 7. So they cleaned it up quite a bit in terms of the user interface, although some of it and, and some of the muddy font stuff seems to be carrying over. Uh, but that is a look at, and they're calling it it currently an alpha version. So this is being tested by a handful of people at this point in time. But the biggest thing is we are now going to have a unified rendering pipeline. I would call that the URP, but that obviously would be confusing at this point in time. But yeah, HDRP built in and universal render pipeline are all going to become one thing, uh, which just makes all kinds of sense. On top of that, uh, shader graph two and block shaders are being added in as well. So you get some ideas how they work. You see some ideas of how the uh, coding works there as well. But the big thing here is the unified renderer um, and authors uh, author assets once for a complete set of platform reach. That's the big thing. So now all of a sudden the fragmentation that we've been seeing on the Unity Asset Store is going to go away. Also have unified shader programming with open PBR and improved shader authoring with the new shader graph 2 functionality. So that is what they're calling the simplicity aspect. Next up, we go into iteration. And this is a big complaint about Unity right now. Uh, it's basically the build time of the content pipeline uh, as well as core CLR. So they're stuck on a version of Mono. They were stuck on a version of Mono from the Stone Age for a very long time. They are moving to core CLR. Now, the downside to that news is that doesn't that means that Unity 6 is not going to see core CLR. Unity 6 is going to be stuck on Mono uh, for a very long time. But at the core of Unity 7 or Unity Next Generation or whatever you want to call it, is going to be core CLR. So the core CLR is basically uh, Microsoft's one .NET runtime to rule them all. Uh, they They've basically have retired mono. The mono runtime is now handled by Wine and is considered more of a backward compatibility thing. Um, so it, it's currently right now, .NET 8, for example, is from November 2023. .NET 9 is November 2024. .NET 10 will be November 2025. Uh, and they're going to support for quite a while. This is going to get you the most current version of .NET. Instead of being stuck on a version of C Sharp from several versions back, it's going to keep you up to date. On top of that, you will get Per, uh, better performance from the results of this change as well. Another area they're changing is the content pipeline. So what they are doing is basically moving things so that they will build continuously uh, and they'll import less and it will be done in the background. So it's importing without blocking. So that means when you're bringing assets in, it doesn't just hang Unity like it does today. You're going to have faster imports uh, and it's going to happen just basically in the background. So that is uh, definitely a nice change for people that are working with it. So uh, the iteration aspects here, they're bringing faster editor iteration times. Core CLR is going to be powering the editor. Also, obviously, your code. Uh, new content pipeline with fewer blocking changes to keep you in the flow. That means that, you know, the things that you, when you import, it brings Unity screeching halt. That is going to be a thing of the past. And on-demand importing with background processing. And then we get into the power aspect. And this is where they take, again, right now it's a fragmented mess because I implemented the data-oriented technology stats, or DOTS, which consists of ECS, of the burst compiler, and so on. And uh, all of those things were kind of implemented separately. And then on top of that, you still have your typical game objects approach and so on. And what they found with Unity 6 anyways, they had to do a... Um, for game objects adaption layer anyways. Uh, so what we're doing is basically building ECS into the core of Unity and then doing compatibility layers for people that like the workflow as it is now. So ECS is going to be an integral part of Unity, but you don't necessarily have to work in components. So it will automatically take advantage of it. Things like transform will be broken into components, even though it looks like you are working with game objects. So it's not going to matter which one you work with. Uh, it will be using the dots technologies behind the scenes. Again, transformations, entity transforms will be components. So they will be parallel or sizable. Uh, Parallelable. I'm not sure how you'd say that word, but basically they will take advantage of the performance gains 
change you get from ECS, but you don't need to do anything about it. We also have a new animation system coming. Uh, this is something that has been very much wanted for a very long time. So a completely new animation system is going to come in um, Unity 7. Again, I'm going to continue to call that. And then we've got some uh, new world building tools as well. And what's interesting with the world building is this is a lot like the um, recently announced Unreal Engine procedural generation stuff. So the terrain stuff kind of got um, ignored for a very long time. They, they didn't even have anyone working on terrain for several years, up till about three or four years ago. Uh, but now you're seeing, again, you can get a preview of what the new user interface looks like, but we're going to have non-destructive terrain editing. Uh, we're going to have procedural generation. So again, this is one of the big new features of Unreal Engine. And this is the kind of stuff that I do think they should be focusing on, which is very nice. Shader graph integration, level design, flexibility, virtual texturing, and tessellation. So this is kind of your uh, answer to Nanite, more or less. Uh, and then scattering of entities. And yeah, so that is where they're looking at from the power perspective. So that essentially is Unity 7's core new features going forward. Uh, new tooling, we're gonna have a simplified single renderer, a faster iteration times, core CLR at the heart of it, the new animation system. Uh, and that's that's it, basically. Uh, this is things that people have been asking for for a very long time when it comes to Unity. And I think they're focusing on the right things. I also think that you're going to see a massive break. So basically, they're saying Unity 6 is going to be supported for a very long time. And I think that's because it's going to have to be. Because Unity 7, is going to be the day the world changed when it comes to Unity. So I think you're going to have an asset store before Unity 7 and after Unity 7 because you're going to have the standardized pipelines. But I also think that they're going to take all these technologies they've been building as, as modules and build them into the core. And it's going to make things more cohesive if they can pull it off. So that is what's coming in Unity 7. When? No idea. So it looks like they're probably going to start looking at like alpha testing, like public alpha or beta in a year, I would guess. And then probably two years out maybe till we see a release. Could be longer, could be shorter. I'm making numbers up if I'm honest. But I wouldn't be surprised that we saw um, the early alpha or beta at the next major event, something like GDC or Unite next year. But I'm not 100% certain. This is a couple of years out before you could actually even dream about using this in production. But that is the core of what they are working on. So you've got the Unity 6 version. We're going to see a lot of dot releases coming for it and all of the big stuff and the new unified core is in Unity 7. I'm curious, what do you think of where they're going? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you not care anymore? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.